G'day ladies and gents, another one of my projects, I'm building a miniature locomotive, uh, this is going to be in the 5 inch, so rails will be 5 inches apart, um, this section of track I've made just to sit my own locomotives on, um, the centre rail and the far rail, between the two faces is five inches and the two outside rails the faces are seven and a quarter inches um, five inch is one inch to one foot or one in twelve scale so I'm building an NR class locomotive the actual locomotive is 22 meters in length the one I'm building is 1.83 metres in length. Um, I'm basically building a, instead of a diesel electric, I'm building a petrol electric. I have a whippersnipper motor with a gearbox on it. That will run the two alternators, which will go to a 12 volt battery in the front. Then it will come back down be converted to 24 volts and go to two batteries one on either side of this motor so there's going to be three batteries total one running at 12 volts and two running 24 volts um, they will just be con the two rear ones will be 12 volt batteries just running series because the electrics and the motors are 24 volts now I've already made the wiring looms um, there's a twist throttle control a lot of people like the lever to start but I don't I'd rather it so that if I let go of the accelerator it stops there's no keeping going that's my dead man switch basically now um, going from 12 volts to 24 volts you're doubling the voltage but you half the amperage so at you now at 24 volts these would need 40 amps running 24 volts uh, 43 amps actually I think it's 43.6 amps running 24 volt so in other words I need around about 92 amps at 12 volt now I'm a big believer of overkill so um, if I'm building something I'll build it stronger than it needs to be if I need power give it more than it needs and then you never run short so instead of 96 I'm actually putting in two 85 amp alternators so that's 170 amps so it's almost double what I actually need now those motors are 500 watt 24 volt um, I'm using electric bike like an electric um, bicycle or electric motorbike that type of thing motors and control units and I've got a couple of electric bikes and stuff here and they work pretty well. Kids love them, you know, the little miniature jobs. And I've got a little miniature Harley that uh, FLO is running around on. Um, so yeah, that's how all of the electrics are going to run. Now I've also got uh, a twin cylinder air pump for the brakes. Um, and there will be an air line coming out the back, similar to a, a, like a barbecue connection really I suppose. And that will run the air lines to the uh, car's brakes on the back for the passengers. Um, now this motor here is a pull start, but I've also just finished building one that is electric and pull start. Uh, basically this is 
a 49cc motor. There's two types. There's this type, which is just your whippersnipper. And uh, you've got a, another type, which has got different mountings, and the head actually sits forward on an angle like that. And this one here also has the... Um, Oh, let's see, where is it? No, actually, this is the other type. Now, this type here, yep, there's the mountings on the bottom of this type. And this one here uses a mounting plate like that. Now, this one, the carby goes on the back like this whereas this one so you've got the carby on there and the exhaust port on the front facing down this one the exhaust port is in the front and the carby goes directly onto the back of the head it doesn't go onto the crankcase like this one so the the two different types of 49cc engine basically. Uh, now you can also have different transmissions. You can have something like this that goes on, which uh, let's see this motor it actually sits like that. Now this one here just has a chain drive coming straight out of the side. like such whereas this one here I've got the transmission on there same as what I've got uh, on that one I've got the transmission on it this is a one-to-one -one drive whereas this one is actually a reduction gearbox also I want the chain to be in line with that whereas with this one here the chain would need to sit about here whereas here it's say an extra, what, uh, 13 mil further out. So these are two different types of 50cc engines, well 49s. You can get them in uh, 33 all the way through to 88cc. I've got an 88 out the back. But I just don't know what I'm doing with that one yet. So uh, also for the centre ridge, of the NR class or a narrow waist locomotive like what the NR is where you've got the walkways down the sides this 150 mil by the time I add the hinges on the sides to lift the sides up to look inside it'll work out at 158 which it needs to be which is an extra 4 mil each side so that'll keep it to scale the only problem I'm going to have is this motor I really don't want the pull starter I can handle sticking out I suppose but that gearbox I don't so I'm actually thinking about even bringing this forward so that all of this actually sits inside the cab and when that's done it will actually sit within the sides now I've just got to be careful. I can have, instead of having the gearbox going backwards, I could also stand the gearbox up so that it's not interfering with this and then it should actually go above that as well. So I might even have to do that. I'll see. I really want all of this drivetrain to sit inside. If that's the case, then I can have the batteries in the centre of the locomotive down the bottom too. Which will keep the weight right down low, which is exactly what I want. I don't want any instance of it even being nearly able to tip, which it shouldn't anyway. Uh, so yeah, that is all of this. So hopefully soon, 
Um, over the next couple of days I'm going to start building the rest of the frame to the correct height that I need and start getting everything ready. Alrighty ladies and gents, have a good one and I shall catch you later. See us.